My name is uh, Mark van Wijk. I work for the International Livestock Research Institute as a senior scientist. Uh, and I work on farming systems analysis. Um, and our work is really concentrating on smallholder farming systems in developing countries. Um, and especially focusing on the relationship between agricultural productivity and human diets. There's a lot of data around, but still there's quite some, some pieces are missing in, in the puzzle in relating quantitatively uh, agriculture production and the human diet. The idea has always been that if we improve agriculture productivity, that would also automatically lead to improvements in human diets. However, the data that are available show that the, the, that relationship is actually much more complex um, and gender equity, and especially the, the control women have over cash and food production, um, seems to play a very important role in mediating those uh, relationships. A major problem is that the, at the moment there are very few harmonized data sets available that can result in sort of generalized relationships across farming systems. Um, how do, how do that, does that all work out? What is determining those relationships and how can we prove those relationships? So our solution is to develop a new tool that's called ROMIS. It's a real household multiple indicator survey. Um, and we have now applied it across a wide range of systems uh, where we have uh, standardized data available across a range of performance indicators of those farm households. And so we have now data from Central America, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, South and Southeast Asia. Uh, for this project we looked especially on the contrast between how things work out in East Africa and Southeast Asia. And the contrast is, is quite clear. For example, in East Africa, if uh, farmers increase their market orientation, so they try to produce more cash with their food production, then that does not automatically lead to improved human diets. You know, the cash is spent in other ways, rather than uh, buying more diverse, diverse foods. Whereas in Southeast Asia, the, where the women have much more control over the cash and over the agriculture production, it does lead to improved diets. In East Africa, uh, improve, uh, our increased market orientation only leads to, uh, to more improved human diets when it's also accompanied by more diverse crop production, yeah, which is typically the food production side is controlled by women in East Africa. So th those are some very interesting contrasting findings and now we try to apply that across all the data sets we, are, we have and are being uh, collected. Um, and in the upcoming period, we try to analyze all those uh, data sets to derive some generic patterns about how gender equity, social cultural conditions uh, mediate the relationships between agricultural production and the intensification of production and human diets. Yeah, we hope that this information uh, will help us to avoid common mistakes uh, we make in terms of projects and the type of interventions uh, we design. So, for example, in East Africa, legumes are often uh, considered the women's crops. The women control the production and the use of the crops uh, within, the, in, within the, the food and within the diets. Um, but if we would, for example, improve the, the market orientation or the market access of these, uh, of these crops so that they can, can generate cash for the families, it's often that the men take over. So if we know these problems and we know these constraints, we can uh, design more realistic interventions that do not fall into the same traps as we have always fallen in the, in the past, uh, past uh, years, in the past decades, you could say. Um, so it, it helps us to design more realistic interventions and to also be more realistic about the effects we can expect from certain, uh, certain interventions. Yeah, and hopefully in, in the future it will also allow us to design uh, new interventions uh, that can improve the, the imbalance in gender equity.